Yeah, g'day, Charlie again. Sorry, was, on this one here we'll do a, um, a quick look at the RF amplifier that we'll have coming on uh, just off the, amp off the antenna before the bandpass filter. Um, I'm going to use just a standard common emitter uh, amplifier here with a voltage divider biasing. That's sort of one that I use over and over again and you know, quite frankly I'm sort of quite comfortable with it so I, I run with it. Um, there's several ways of biasing these or doing the calculations for I'll just do the way that's worked for me uh, right or wrong um, it's roughly about right for me make an assumption for the 3904 that the beta is around 100 um, in this particular configuration I want to try and aim for a Z in of around 50 ohms to match the antenna um, my emitter resistor here um, I'm going to have fully bypassed so if that's the case then my Z in is going to be R1 because this is well bypassed, this is essentially folded over to earth will be R1 in parallel with R2 for the voltage divider in parallel with, in this particular case, beta RE, little RE that is um, right, so from here um, I make the assumption or I just set little, uh, so again beta RE to be around 55 ohms so that once it's in parallel with these two it's sort of roughly 50 odd ohms um, if we now reverse engineer it to try and um, make uh, IE the subject um, we can substitute in 100 for the beta um, assuming little RE is 26 millivolts divided by IE we'll come out with a, an emitter current of around 47 milliamps uh, and we'll also assume from a rule of thumb that IC is approximately equal to IB so having got that we can now look at determining um, a value for um, RE and what we'll do there is we'll go uh, as a rule of thumb we'll set the emitter voltage to be a tenth of VCC so it's 12 volts so it'll be 1.2 volts um, and then we can say 1.2 volts divided by my 47 milliamps going through it comes out to be 25 ohms so we'll just use 22 ohms um, out of the junk box looking at the, the voltage divider biasing for R1 um, what we're going to do there is we want to find the voltage drop across that and then we'll work out the current through it to work out the resistance um, we've said it's 22 ohms for the emitter resistor so 47 times 22 gives us the voltage at the actual voltage at that point plus 0.7 um, gives us the voltage here so now we can go 12 volts minus that 1.7 divided by the current and for a nice stiff voltage divider biasing here we want to have through this one here um, at least 11 times the base current uh, therefore this one here will be 10 so we can do now uh, 47 milliamps assuming that IC is approximately what IE divided by beta gives you IB times 11 and we can do that division there and we'll come out at 1984 ohms so we'll just use roughly 2k for R2 um, similar process, so it will be the voltage here divided by its current will give us the uh, resistance so that 1.7 volts at the base in this, case, in this case it's going to be 10 times um, IB so again IC divided by beta equals IB times 10 do the division, comes out 359 so we'll use roughly 390 ohms so uh, that's roughly how I, I do it there are lots of other ways of doing it um, it seems to work okay with me um, so I'm basically sticking with it. What we'll do now is we'll just break here and we'll go and we'll throw this circuit into um, LT Spice and then we can look at trying to find a value of this inductor here to try and give us um, not, it won't it'll never be flat but um, at least uh, a, a decent sort of gain across uh, the 80 through 20 meters um, and just pointing out too Hanging off the output of this amplifier will be a 10k ohm pot, just for a, 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 a simple way of adjusting the output gain. And then hanging off that again will be uh, 50 ohms, uh, which will be the bandpass filter. So we'll look to simulate that in LT Spice. Right, so let's just break here and we'll bring up LT Spice and we shall go from there. Right, so we've got the circuit now in Spice or LT Spice. Uh, very useful program for simulating uh, the circuit 
Um, so that's basically in here. What I tend to do is I have one of these amplifiers saved as a template, which I then open up each time and then do a save as. Um, and that way I've got sort of pre-set up. I don't have to try and remember any of these commands for the simulation. And you know, the transistors are there ready to go. Um, the SIGGEN at the front end um, and the like. So I find that quite useful. So I can just very quickly sort of hover over these components. You can't quite see it in your video here, but at the bottom of my screen, I can see that that's sitting on 51 milliamps. So that's quite close to the 47 milliamps that we designed for. I can sort of reaffirm here the biasing current through the, the voltage divider biasing here to get that nice and stiff. That's sitting at five milliamps, um, which is good. It's very close to the 10 times through this one and 11 times the base current required to get a nice stiff um, voltage divider bias there. So that's good. Uh, and what we're doing here is we're playing around with this value here um, to try and get, uh, well, it will never be flat, but a, a compromise gain across the range of frequencies that I'm trying to get. In this particular case, trying to make this useful for 80 through 20 meters. So what we can do is we can hit the old simulator man up here. Uh, in this particular case, we are looking at the AC analysis and we are starting at 3.5 megahertz and running up to 14.2 megahertz which we see here 3.5 and on the right hand side 14.2 and we can see there the peak at roughly about 5.7 megs uh, and we're getting a full variation across that whole range of about 3 db so not too bad um, so I think we'll stick with that. The, the higher in this value we go, this tends to move down. Um, I don't want to go that way. I'll sort of keep it um, higher up. Um, so I think at this stage of the game, uh, we will run with that. And we will solder it up, which I've done. And uh, we will have a look on the oscilloscope and see what that looks like. And then look at some of the real world gains. Um, just for interest sake, you can, if I right click down here, I can change the transient analysis. So these are the two main ones I use, AC and transient. In the transient side, um, you can see here, um, I basically, again, so up in here, I've got those commands ready to go. I just cut and paste them to here rather than having to think too much. Um, so that's basically going to start saving at five microseconds into the simulation and then stop at six um, microseconds. And what we get with that when we do that is we get the traditionally what you see with an oscilloscope. Um, so this is from our SIGGEN. That's at 3.7 megs. And then we can increase it up to say 14 to 100, 1, 2, 3, enter. Simulate it again, and there we are at the much higher frequency, 14.2 megs. Um, so you just sort of get an idea of, um, are you still got a linear circuit um, for your design? So that's another quite a useful little feature. So let's break here. We're going to have a look at the oscilloscope, and we'll look at the gain calculations uh, in circuit. Okay, so we've got the circuit built up here. Um, what we've got, we've got the antenna coming in and at the other end of that I've got a, a signal generator um, it's coming through to the switch here this switch is either a bypass switch so in the off position it just bypasses straight to the output uh, and in the on position it's now going through the amplifier and then back out the output uh, you can't quite see down here but there's a small 50 ohm resistor um, hanging across the output of uh, the pot which is um, the, the crude way of adjusting the gain <laughs> Right, so we've got two um, two probes. We've got a probe on the input here, and we've got a probe on the output. And okay, so we've got here um, the oscilloscope, just using a, um, a PC-based Pico scope for this particular one. Uh, and just down the bottom here, I've got uh, on measurement A um, the frequency coming in, and then just just for this particular case, the peak-to-peak -peak voltages for both channels. So at the moment we're sitting here on with a SIGGEN saying 3.5 megahertz and we can see across the 50 ohm resistor we have uh, sitting on about the average there is 384 roughly so and the input is coming in at about 51 millivolts so 51 Divide log 20 times, it's putting about 17.5 17 17 dB. 
Um, and what I can do now is I can increase it up to, and you'll see the frequency here uh, run up. We'll go up to 7.1 7 .1 megahertz, so 7.1, and that's just jumped up now. So on the average on the output, we're seeing 297 millivolts, so 297, and on the input, uh, the SIGGEN here is starting to drop off as we go out, but never mind, it's a relative voltage uh, range here. So 37 we'll go with, 37 divide, log 20 times, so getting 18 dB there. And then we can bring it up to 14.1 megahertz. So that's 14.1. So 14.1 there, and we're starting to see on the output uh, 145 millivolts, input is 25 millivolts, divide log 20 times, 15.2 dB. So, not too bad. Um, I think we'll stick with that for now and we'll see how that goes once this, um, the whole radio is built. And we can always come back here and, um, and look at tweaking that a little bit. But um, I think that's probably about right for now. So, in real world, we're getting what do we say, 17.5, 18.1 and 15.2, so roughly that sort of 2 dB range, uh, which is not far off the range that uh, LT Spice, but noticeably uh, a lot lower than what the simulation was saying, but um, I found that to be the case, that uh, the simulator is good for getting a rough idea of what's going on, but uh, the actual real world measurements and performances is a little bit different, but again a very useful tool. So we'll break there and uh, we will continue on with, I think, designing or having a play around with the cascoded uh, J310s for the product detector and the initial mixer. Um, see if I can make those work. I know N6QW has been playing around with those with his latest Simple Siva um, project. Um, so I wouldn't mind actually giving those a go. Might be a way of actually reducing the parts count on both the mixer and the, uh, the product detector. You know, we'll break there. And uh, any questions to sing out, otherwise uh, we'll continue.